Alrighty, so you think you got fungus gnats. Well, let's talk about it. You probably do. You're probably right. Most likely you do have fungus gnats and they're probably everywhere and they're probably flying in your face and flying in your mouth when you open up the tent. And that's just because they're attracted to uh, the, the carbon dioxide that comes out of your mouth, the air that comes out of your mouth, the CO2. Uh, they're attracted to it and uh, they just want to just go all up in it. So they'll be all up in your eyes and your face and trying to go in your ears and stuff like that when you're really deep down in your tents. And uh, that's pretty much how you know you got them. You know, his first signs of them is bugs in your face or bugs all over the bottom of your tent or just bugs that you can just see coming up in and out of your soil. Um, and you're wondering what the hell is going on. Yeah, you, you got fungus gnats. You probably got fungus gnats. Well, the good news is, is that I'm here to tell you how to take care of fungus gnats, how to prevent them. And if you get them, how to take care of them. Um, I'm just gonna tell you guys my method of taking care of fungus gnats. Now, there are a bunch of different methods out there of fungus gnat control and prevention and uh, stuff like that. Stuff that you can buy at like your local hydroponic store and stuff like that. Stuff that you can put on your soils that'll kill the fungus gnats and kill the larvae and all that other good stuff. So you can buy that stuff or you can buy um, the stuff that I use. So it's pretty much completely up to you. So I'm just, like I said, I'm gonna tell you guys my method and then I'm gonna go through some of the list, uh, list of pretty much a preventative list on what you guys can do to keep from getting fungus gnats again and pretty much keep them from just having a major outbreak, period. Now before we get started, we should probably learn just a little bit about fungus gnats and I'm not gonna sit here and bore you guys to death about fungus gnats and sit here for 20 minutes and tell you their entire life cycle and what they do and what they suck on and feed on and you know blah 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 and how many legs and toes and fingers they have because you know that's not what I'm here to do alright you guys have fungus nets you want to take care of them you want them gone you want to know how to get rid of them you want to know how to keep them gone forever I'm gonna go over everything all my steps all my knowledge I'm gonna try to give all that stuff to you all right here in this one video so like I said first we have to learn just a little bit about fungus nets what they are what they do to our plants how they live so that way we know how to combat them and keep them from coming back. So let's talk real quick about the life cycle of a fungus gnat. The better that we know the fungus gnat, the better that we can combat the fungus gnat and get rid of it. As long as we know the life cycle and how they act and what they're doing, then we can act appropriately to better take care of the problem, right? Right. So, a fungus gnat, what are they? They're pretty much mosquito-like little bugs, tiny little things. I mean, they honestly look like little mosquitoes, but just miniaturized, really, really small. They got really long legs um, and kind of look like a little mosquito. They fly around your tent. They spend most of the time on your soil um, laying eggs, and that is the issue right there. Those eggs right there are the problem. So uh, after about a few days, those eggs hatch. Then after about 12 to 14 days, those larvae uh, feed and eat once they become strong enough they grow and then they sprout little wings and then they come out of your soil and then they fly around and then they lay eggs and then the eggs hatch and then the larvae come to life and then they feed and it happens over and over and over again it doesn't stop so you get one fungus gnat it drops a few eggs now you get a bunch of them and then a bunch and a bunch and next thing you know you you're opening your tent and you have a complete infestation of fungus gnats in every single pot doesn't matter which one you have where Every single pot will be completely infested. They'll be flying in your face, flying in your mouth. They're everywhere. Okay, so now that we know the life cycle of a fungus gnat, let's go ahead and break it down. How do you get rid of your fungus gnats? How do you get rid of them? Well, for me, it's this behind me. Diatremaceous earth. I probably said that wrong. I'm going to say it wrong probably every single time that I say it. It's just difficult for me to say. This is what I turn to. Di Diatremaceous earth. Oh, I almost messed it up that time. <laughs> so anyways... Uh, yeah, super simple. It's easy to use. Uh, it does take some time, mind you, and I'm going to tell you guys how to use it and how I use it. Now, these are just my methods on how I combat fungus gnats and how I get rid of fungus gnats. Now, I encourage you to Google search fungus gnats, learn about fungus gnats, and then determine for yourself what method of treatment is best for you because there's all sorts of different types of treatment you can put hydrogen peroxide you can put all sorts of different things in there you there's actually stuff that you can buy on amazon you can spray onto your soil that's supposed to just get rid of fungus gnats so if that's what you want to do then by all means go ahead and give it a shot and see if that works for you this is what works for me so this is how i'm going to tell you guys on what to do and how to treat okay um like i said there's other methods out there so Feel free to explore other possibilities if you don't like my method. Now, this method here for treating fungus gnats works with 
organic feeding and synthetic feeding or bottle feeding as I like to call it. Uh, so if you're bottle feeding or if you're organic feeding, it doesn't matter, this works just as fine. Uh, now when it comes to fungus nets, they don't care if you have organic soil or if you have synthetic soil. It doesn't matter to them. The fact is, is that things are wet inside there, there's food in there, you have the roots of your plants, there's food in there and that's where they want to live, that's where they want to breed, that's where they want to lay their eggs, that's where they want to just... So inside your grow tents is pretty much just a straight up, how can I say this? Um, it's just everything that a fungus gnat could ever want inside of your grow tent. So there are preventative measures, and we're gonna go over preventative measures here after I tell you guys how I treat first. So after I tell you guys how to treat, then we'll go over prevent preventative. So there are things that you can do to prevent uh, fungus gnats. A lot of different things that you guys can do to prevent fungus gnats, and we're gonna go over a lot of them. Uh, I've written down a lot of things, and we're gonna go over every single one of them. But treatment, okay, so let's get into it here. Treatment, diatremaceous diet earth. And so now that we know the life cycle of a fungus gnat from the eggs to the larvae, and they feed on our roots and they're feeding on decomposing organic material. They're feeding on just everything that's in the soil. Everything that's in there. They're just, it's a free for all. They're just loving every bit of it. They're just, ooh, they're everywhere. Okay, those are supposed to be the larvae, whatever. Uh, so they're everywhere. And then they're flying out and then they're flying everywhere. And then they're sticking to your buds because they're landing on your buds. And if you're in the middle of the flower, they're all over the place. They're landing on your. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. All right, so we need to get rid of them. So now you need to interrupt. The fungus gnat's life cycle is what you need to do. You need to get in there somewhere and you need to interrupt that. Okay, now for me, it's diatrom diatromaceous earth. Okay, so a simple top dressing of diatromaceous earth at the right time will interrupt that uh, cycle of the fungus gnat and pretty much get you through the rest of your grow. And then it's pretty much up to you once you start your next grow to make sure that everything is in check uh, so you don't get fungus gnats again. So, you need to finish this grow. You gotta get through it. You're in veg, you're in flower, you got fungus gnats, and you gotta, you gotta eliminate them so that way you can move on and get finished with what's going on here, right? Right, diatomaceous earth, simple as that. So, my thing is, is that there's a different type, there's a couple different ways of actually going about this. So, if you're running auto flowers and you're running photo periods, there's completely different ways of treating it. Basically, it's the same way, but it's different times. Okay, you gotta kind of, it's, it's all about timing with this. It's all about timing with this. And it's important because if you're feeding organic, you're also top dressing as well. So if you're top dressing, you're also top dressing this in, you wanna make sure that you're watering from the top. But if you're top dressing in that in, you can't water from the top. See what I'm saying? So it's all about timing. It's all about timing. So if you're running photo periods, it's probably the easiest. If you're running nothing but photo periods and you have nothing but photo periods uh, inside of your grow, the best thing to do, honestly, is um, if you're about two weeks away from a top dressing or if you're about two weeks away from a transplant would be a good time. You can also do it right after a transplant. That's also a good time. So pretty much what you're doing is you're top dressing in this diatomaceous earth. You're just sprinkling it on top all over the place and creating a shield is what you're doing, a shield set way the bugs can't get through it and they can't come back up through it from the soil once the larvae hatch and grow wheat or wings and all that stuff. Uh, once they do that, they can't come back up. So what is diatromaceous earth? Let me just break it down to you. It's just razor blades in a bag. For anything soft bodied, mammal like, uh, not mammal, I'm sorry. Is that the wrong word for it? That uh, probably is the wrong word for it. Uh, any soft bodied creature, there we go. Any soft bodied creature, uh, it's like razor blades. It's like barbed wire razor blades and all kinds of like, it's like AIDS needles all like inside, you know, and they crawl through it and that's it. They're, they're done. They're done. Uh, just like that. They try to get in, they're done. They try to get out, they're done. It just, so two weeks before top dressing, two weeks uh, before a transplant with photo periods or right after a transplant with photo periods. Photo periods probably is the best and easiest to actually eliminate fungus gnats if you're running nothing but photo periods because of the way that everything is going on. Uh, usually you're always transplanting, you're popping pot to pot until you get into your final pot. And that's usually a good time to hit, the, hit them with the diatomaceous earth. And then what you're gonna do is after you top dress the diatomaceous earth in, now for the next two weeks, 14 days, 14 days, 14 days, okay? For the next 14 days, 
you need to water from the bottom. So you got to make sure you have a saucer, okay, underneath your pots, and you have to make sure that you water from the bottom. So now what you're doing is you're watering from the bottom, and now you're also going to make sure that you're watering at about uh, half of what you normally would. So you want to make sure that, that water is going to get soaked up and it's going to come up, but you want to make sure that it doesn't come up so far that your top layer of soil gets wet. Okay? So top dress it in. Two weeks, you're watering from the bottom. Simple. That's what photo periods. With auto flowers, it's pretty much the exact same way. Exact same way. Uh, only it can be a little bit more difficult only because you know auto flowers are on a time limit and you really want to give them as much nutrients as possible so you know you want to always be watering from the top really because you're mostly always your top dressing you know your top dressing they're, they're in their final pot so they get a lot of top dressing they start in their final pot they get a lot of top dressing uh, so it's a little bit difficult on the timing of it all and I know we want to get rid of the fungus gnats like right away and sometimes you just top dressed and it's like that's when you discovered the fungus gnats well now you really gotta wait you should actually wait at least a good two weeks of watering on the top making sure that those nutrients can come down to the bottom before you let the top of your pot dry out and add the diatremaceous earth so that's very very important before you add the diatremaceous earth i can't say this earth i i, I don't even know if i'm saying it right <laughs> i think i am uh you want to make sure that uh you want to make sure that everything's dry. You want to make sure that it's fully dry before you top dress it in. You don't want it to clump at all. The drier that this stuff is and the drier that it stays, the better. It's like a full-on barrier, full-on shield. And you don't have to put much in there. Just a little sprinkling on the top, all around. Just make sure you coat all the way around your pots, very, very top and bottom. And you're good to go, honestly. Then you wait about 14 days and you water from the bottom for 14 days. After the 14 days, you don't have to remove the diatremaceous earth. All you need to do after 14 days is just pour your water through it. This stuff here actually has a lot of nutrients in it. Well, not a lot of nutrients in it, but it does have some nutrients in it, like calcium, for instance. It does. It has stuff in it that your plants will like and will enjoy. But don't go crazy on it. Don't just like start pouring gallons of this crap in there to the point where you turn your fans on and it's like, Poof! All over the place. You, you don't need that. Trust me, a little bit goes a long way. This stuff is like lethal to anything that crawls through it. Literally. If anything crawls and it crawls through it, it's just it's destroyed. So, alright, so you top dressed your diatremaceous earth in. Uh, what do you do now? Yeah, you sit and you wait. You be patient. You have to be wait and you have to be patient. Now there's other methods out there that are much, much faster for taking care of fungus gnats. Now, like I said, this is just my method. This is just my way of doing it. A lot of you guys out there ask me, you know, how I do it. And this is how I do it every time. It's all about prevention, though. So that way you don't have to do this. You should not have to do this. I haven't had to do this in the past year and a half. Knock on wood. There's nothing around. Uh, knock on wood. I haven't had to do this in like a year and a half because I've learned a lot and it's all about prevention and it's all about uh, keeping your grow tents and your pots in check so that way the fungus gnats can't breed in there and they don't want nothing to do with it. Okay. Uh, yes, there's food in there and stuff like that, but if the conditions are not right for them, they're not going to want to live in there. They're going to go somewhere else. Okay. So that's it. These are just my methods of feeding or not feeding these are my methods i'm used to saying feeding so that's it these are my methods for taking care of fungus gnats and it's just simple you top dress it in you water from the bottom for two weeks you make sure that that top of the soil doesn't get wet and it's just a barrier and then like after about two days two days or so you'll open up your tents and you'll come inside and you'll look down at the ground and you'll actually see fungus gnats all over the ground trying their hardest to fly but they can't because their wings are just completely shredded and they're missing parts of their legs and stuff like that so they're literally just flopping all over the bottom of your tents and stuff like that fast forward to about maybe day five you open up your tent and it's just literally fungus gnats everywhere and there'll be fungus gnats in the corner of your tents where they're piling up because your fan is blowing them around and they're piling up in the corners and now you're starting to actually see what type of problem you really actually had so now them fungus gnats are hatching out of there, the larvae are hatching, and they're coming through and they're just getting shredded and they're falling to the floor of your tent and they're everywhere. And you're seeing it firsthand that they're just not living anymore and that they are not surviving anymore. And then you know, 
but patience is patience is everything. Now I know that a lot of you guys that you want them gone right now. You don't want to wait, and you don't want to wait to 12 to 14 days. Uh, it should be about 14 days. You don't want to wait that long, and I completely understand that. You know, it, whatever works for me doesn't always work for you, and uh, it just is the way that it is. So. Uh, yeah, that's it though. I mean, it's it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. And like I said, after you're done, all you have to do is just water it in. Or if it's time for a top dressing, put your top dressing on and just top dress it all in and then water it all in together. It will not affect anything whatsoever. Synthetic nutrients, bottle feeding, organic nutrients, it'll only increase organic nutrients and help. It'll help in synthetic too as well. It'll give your plants some nutrients probably that your synthetics aren't giving. Uh, so it's like good stuff here it's like what is this stuff like powdered fossils or something like that it's it's razor blades for fungus gnats <laughs> it's it's they just don't like it they don't like it at all so let's go ahead and talk about prevention let's go ahead and go through prevention on how you guys can keep fungus gnats under control and out of your grow room so when it comes to preventing fungus gnats it couldn't be any simpler honestly you have to keep the con conditions right inside your grow room and you have to keep uh, your pots going on a proper wet dry cycle okay so cannabis itself loves a great wet dry cycle they really really do even if you're fighting feeding synthetic even if you're feeding organic but i know everybody says you have to keep the microbes wet and you have to keep everything wet and it just makes everything thrive and everything else there's um there's there's a point where between wet stays wet and dry is you know what i mean so you got to find that point okay and your pots have to dry out. They have to. They have to dry. Not completely. They don't have to get so super dry, but they have to get dry to the points where your plants actually start to kind of just droop just a little bit. And you start to notice that little droop and you kind of look at them and go, hmm, you may need some water. And then you water them and then about an hour later they just kind of perk right back up again. That's where you want to be. Okay, that's where you want to be. Those are proper wet dry cycles. You're watering and then you're drying and then you're watering and you're drying and you're watering and you're drying, okay? Proper wet dry cycles, fungus gnats can't stand it. Why? Because they like it wet. They want it moist, they like it wet. That's how the eggs hatch, that's how the larvae thrive, that's how uh, they get to your roots and all that stuff. If it's dry in there, it's not a favorable environment that they like to live in, okay? So that's step number one. Probably the biggest actual thing that you can do the biggest actual thing is proper wet dry cycles. Now I know everybody tells you the microbes have to stay wet. No, you need to do proper wet dry cycles or you're gonna have serious pest problems. And fungus gnats are only the beginning, honestly. Fungus gnats will only be the beginning. If you're oversaturating your pots and you're watering way too much, way more than you're supposed to be, you're only asking for problems and fungus gnats is just the beginning. And fungus gnats, that's an easy one to take care of. Other problems, you don't even want to talk or deal with those problems. Now other things you can do too is keeping the humidity in, in check. Keeping the humidity in check. Keeping the humidity down. If your humidity levels are too high, fungus gnats are just going crazy. They're loving it. They just, they're coming from a dry environment. Say you're having really dry days outside and got the windows open and everything in the house, but your tents are just like just dripping moisture down the walls because you're 70 percent humidity and everything else you're just ringing the dinner bell ding, 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 ding. come my way come my way humidity this way humidity moisture this way over here over here over here so making sure that your humidity levels stay in check and are in check is very very important so pot dryness wet dry cycles and humidity two very very important things to keeping fungus gnats under control uh speaking of outside keeping your screens and windows shut Making sure that your screens have no holes in them and keeping your windows shut is also another good thing uh, to keeping fungus gnats out. Because they, they will have the slightest little hole in your screen and they will find a way through it and they will find a way into your tent and then as soon as you unzip it. Uh, that's another thing, keep your tent zipped up. Keep your tent zipped up at all times. That's why there's passive vents and filters or uh, little vents down on the sides of your tents uh, to keep bugs from coming in. Now, if you need more airflow and you're bringing it in through uh, other means, then you're definitely going to want to use some sort of bug shield or something like that to keep the fungus gnats from getting in because they will find a way in and they will get in. One way or another, they're going to get in. Uh, so, yeah, that's another thing. Keep your tents closed. Keep your windows and screens in check. Uh, make sure there's uh, no holes in them. Make sure there's no holes in your grow tent. Make sure there's no holes in your vent passive vents down there because that's another thing. They'll go right in through there as well. 
So aside from making sure that your screens are good and your tents are good and you're doing proper wet dry cycles and all that other good stuff, fabric pots. Fabric pots are actually um, really, really, a really, really good defense of fungus gnats. Now that just gives fungus gnats one entry, top. Okay, so they have to go into the top and they have to come out through the top of your soil. Okay, so by top dressing in diatomaceous earth, you pretty much seal up the top. They have only one way in and one way out, so they have no choice but to go through this stuff. So fabric pots, fabric pots are actually very, very good for controlling fungus gnats and keeping fungus gnats under control. If you have plastic pots, plastic pots actually keep the soil just a little bit wetter than fabric pots do. So that actually makes breeding, uh, or not breeding, but uh, uh, makes their environment for living a little bit better okay the fungus gnats so if you also have plastic pots and that's all you have and that's all you like to work with uh, what you need to do with fungus gnats uh, to keep them from going crazy throughout your pots is preparation of your pots before you get started so you take your pots and what I recommend is going to the hardware store and you buy some of that that weeding stuff that you put down in your flower beds before you put your flowers down to keep weeds from coming through it allows water to drain through but weeds don't come through the stuff's really cheap for a roll and you cut out a piece of it and you line the bottom of your pots and what you want to do is you want to block off them bottom holes down there at the bottom of your pots because the fungus gnats will live down there too even if you put this up top they'll just move down there and they'll live down there while you're treating up here. So now you're watering down here, bottom watering, and you're just giving them everything that they want, okay? So you have to put a liner inside of your plastic pots to keep bugs from going inside. So once you do that, then you can top dress this in, top dress that in, wait 12 to 14 days, and then you can go ahead and water it in, and then go ahead and continue about your grow as normal. Uh, now when it comes to soil, extra soil, compost, worm castings, all that, you want to make sure all that stuff stays sealed up completely. Uh, if you keep it outside in your garage or your shed or something like that, you want to make sure it stays sealed up completely. Even in your house, if you keep it in your basement, seal it up. Make sure the bags are rolled up. Don't leave everything wide open because all it takes is just that one fungus and that to get in there, lay some eggs, and then it's game on. Every time that you come in for your soil, your compost, your worm castings, to do a little top dressing, and you pull a little scoop out of there, and you pour it on the top, and you top dress it in, and you water, you're activating not only your nutrients and your worm castings and all that, you're activating, yes, fungus gnats. And that's it. They're going to go crazy, and then there you got them. Now, other methods that you can use, too, are, yeah, yellow sticky cards. I'm sure some of you guys have seen me with yellow sticky cards inside of my tents before. Uh, they work. It's only, mainly, I only use them for indicators as to how bad I got them. That's all. I don't use them for, for, for prevention. I don't use them for anything like that. So if I open up the tents and I'm watering top dressing and I see one fly around, I'll put some yellow cards in there just to see how bad I got it. And then the cards will stay in there for a while. If I see enough on there, then I'll treat. If I don't see enough on there, well, then I just move on to my next girl and away we go. Um, it's just really that simple. If you keep all your conditions in check, proper wet dry cycles, humidity in check, screens in check, tent doors shut, all that other good stuff that I just mentioned, you won't have fungus gnats. Fungus gnats will have one hell of a time trying to get it situated inside of your grow. And that's the key. Prevention is the key. Uh, but I think that's it, you guys. I think that's all about all I got for you guys. If you guys have any more questions, please feel free to drop them below, and I'll get to them. Uh, fungus gnats are, are everywhere. If you guys have your own prevention method uh, that really works well for you, be it synthetic nutrients or bottle feeding or organic feeding, whatever it is, if you have your own method and it's worked well for you in the past, please put it down below so that way everybody else can go down there and read and have a place to come and see what other people are doing and what other people have done to get rid of fungus gnats because they are they're they're annoying nobody wants them in there nobody wants, they do they land on your flowers you're in the middle of flower they land on your flowers and they stick to your trichomes and you know if you don't get them off there i'm sorry man but you know ah, mm, good fungus gnats bro that ah, tastes good you know what i'm saying so no nobody wants fungus gnats in their grill so but that's it, you guys. That's going to do it for me. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate everything. And I'll catch you guys this weekend for this weekend's update. Have a good one.